We all know that income is being increasingly difficult to source in the current environment. What I really want to talk to you today about is the Schroeder's Absolute Return Income Fund and how we're looking to address the challenge around delivering income. One of the key features around the Schroeder's Absolute Return Income Fund is it looks to boost the income but importantly doing it in a defensive manner. So what we look to do is deliver 3.4% per annum via monthly distributions but importantly do it in a way that we're not going to put capital at risk. How do we do this? Well, we use our local expertise, but also to the global reach through all the global network through Schroders, so we can access a wide range of investments across the globe, across different countries, different qualities, um, and different sectors. And in doing so, look to build a robust defensive income portfolio. And importantly, being able to be accessed through ChiX, it's one easy way to actually get a defensive, diversified income exposure in your fixed income portfolio. So how do we go about it? Well, there's four key elements to our process and approach. First of all, we think valuations matter. Why? Well, it's the price you pay for an asset which is going to determine the outcome at the end of the day. What we don't want to do is we don't want to overpay for an asset. So therefore, we focus very much on the valuation and how much we're actually going to buy that investment for. Importantly, we also actually want to use the broadest opportunity set. Why? Well, Australia is a relatively small part of the global investment universe. By seeking opportunities outside of Australia, we actually give ourselves a better opportunity to deliver a more diversified portfolio and hit that income target that we're looking to deliver to. In doing so, we think it's really important to be active. We are quite concerned at the moment about the rise of, of passive ETFs. We think you need to be active. You need to be able to give yourself the opportunity to avoid the losers and pick the winners. And in doing so, make your portfolio work harder rather than just taking a passive approach where, for example, you might be just buying the most indebted companies in an index rather than actually making a conscious decision based on valuation in terms of what assets or what companies you want to lend your money to. And finally, the risk piece is really important. We don't define risk as volatility, but risk is around losing money. What we don't want to do is put excessive amounts of capital at risk. So in doing so, generating defensive income naturally means we need to be look forward looking in terms of the risk we take, but also to active in terms of when we take it and which markets we take them through. Let me demonstrate what I'm talking about here. Fixed income markets globally are larger than equity markets. What I've got here on this slide is what we call our patchwork quilt, and it's got a range of 10 fixed income investments dating back to calendar returns in 2003. Now fixed income is very broad and diverse in that you've got everything from cash to investment grade credit, term deposits, some investment grade credit, emerging market debt, high yield leverage loans, etc. It's very broad and diverse. It's important to be active because last year's winner may be next year's loser. And what that allows you to do is to build diversified portfolios where you access the best opportunities at the best point in time. For example, global high yield back in 2006 gave you a 12% return. Roll forward to 2008 and you've got a minus 27% return. That clearly demonstrates you want to be in the right assets at the right time. But importantly, you have diversification possibilities as well. Let me show you what I mean. What I've got here is the return from Australian government bonds and compare those to global high yield. Now, global high yield may be a good source of return, but there are points in the market, points in time, that you don't actually want to own those assets. But importantly, you also want to build a diversified portfolio to combine assets that behave differently across different periods of time. So in this example, you can see the blue line is typically up when the yellow line is down, meaning that by combining these two assets, I can have a more diversified, lower volatility portfolio. And we think that's really key to harness all the opportunities possible around the globe at the moment. It's particularly important, we think, because the current environment is actually quite challenging. As I mentioned earlier, up, what we've had is we've had a situation where income is more difficult to achieve. We've had cash rates falling, term deposit rates falling, and bond rates decreasing. Overall, yields have been dropping because then the risk premium on top of that has reduced. So people have seen their income levels drop. So for example, if I roll the TD today versus a year ago, my income is actually going to be 40% less. So as a result, we need to look further afield to look for opportunities to deliver that income. To demonstrate the point even further, globally we've got around $14 trillion worth of negative government bond yields. In that situation there, we can see that if we simply buy a government bond, risk-free asset in Europe, for example, there's a possibility that we're going to get a negative return by simply holding that asset. 
Obviously, that doesn't really fulfil our requirement, A, in terms of delivering income, but also to B, managing the capital risk in our portfolio. So what do we think is the most important way to go about it? Well, we're quite conscious that people are moving further and further out the risk spectrum. And this slide actually demonstrates that from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, the further you go out the risk spectrum, the more yield you get. But remembering there is no free lunch. So as I'm increasing my yield, by definition, I'm increasing risk as well. When I say risk, increased risk of capital loss. So for example, I can borrow money to pay, buy a mortgage at 3.5% and my credit card rate's 12%. If someone's offering me a 5 to 7% return, it's somewhere in between bricks and mortar type assets or unsecured lending. As you go further out that yield spectrum, you're increasing the risk and hence potentially compromising the defensive portion of your portfolio. We're not saying don't own these assets, but what we're saying is be careful how much you own of them, but importantly how you build the portfolio around them. Hybrids have been the mainstay of many investors' portfolios for a long period of time, and we use them, but we importantly combine them with other diversifying assets and manage the overall risk of the portfolio through liquidity, duration, and currency. So be careful when you're out there looking for yield. Know what you're gonna buy, know what role it's gonna play, but importantly, understand the downside risk. The way we look to approach it, the way that we look to build portfolios is really to draw on multiple sources, both in terms of actively managing the top-down allocations to overall assets, but also to the bottom-up alpha generation possibilities. So that is picking the winners and avoiding the losers. So a starting point can be credit-based assets. So what we've got here is you have a situation where we can start building the portfolio around credit instruments. So in order to earn a return above a risk-free rate, I need to take some risk. And I can take those in a multitude of credit investments globally. Remember, global opportunities are far greater than those in Australia. In doing so, I can access a diverse opportunity through different geographies, different countries, different qualities, different sectors, and even different points on the capital structure. So that gives me a really important component of yield without necessarily just simply buying one asset, such as a mortgage fund, and going way out the risk spectrum. But importantly, I can then combine those with exposure to interest rates. And what I mean there is looking at how the future direction of interest rates are going to affect the price of a bond. So by adding credit investments for yield, then interest rate exposures can then adjust the portfolio diversification and risk to be complementary, as we've seen in one of those previous slides. I can then add in currencies that also aim to deliver a return, but also to manage risk. So I know that the Aussie dollar, for example, is typically weaker against the US dollar when we have a situation where equity markets fall and when risk assets sell off. So I can incorporate that into the portfolio as well. But importantly, we overlay this with a liquidity focus. Investors can have their money back when they want it, simply because we run a portfolio that has a key focus on liquidity. What we don't want to have is a whole range of illiquid assets that can't be liquidated and hence investors be trapped. Liquidity portfolio, liquidity from our perspective is very important. And finally, that risk focus. What we want to ensure is that we have capital stability. What we don't want to do is buy a large amount of risk, then hence put capital through loss or default um, at risk. And I think this is really important because as there's a temptation to move further out the risk spectrum, people may be inadvertently putting more and more capital at risk to earn higher income. We think the better way is to balance that out through a diversified portfolio, through a global approach, but very importantly, that focus on risk. So how's the outcome look? Well, this is a portfolio that looks to deliver a cash plus return. And on the left-hand side of this slide, you can see quite clearly that we've delivered a cash plus return over different market environments. I think that's really important because in the absolute return space, you want absolute positive returns. And through our approach, I think we've demonstrated that combining credit rates and currency with a risk focus, we're able to deliver that. But importantly, on the right-hand side as well, you can see there in the dark blue, that's the income component naturally coming through the portfolio. So we're not manufacturing the income, we're not manufacturing the distributions. What we're doing is actually earning through coupons and other investments, the actual income that's passed through to the end investor. So bringing it all together, uh, quite clearly cash rates and bond yields have fallen. This has made the income piece um, more challenging as the day, go day goes by. What we're noticing is that more investors are going further out the risk spectrum and buying assets increasingly that have higher yields but we bring with them higher amounts of risk. 
we think it's really important at this particular point in the cycle that we remain defensive and true to our defensive allocations and not simply buy assets that may be illiquid, low quality or in strange assets that um, people don't really necessarily understand. Clearly, in fixed income remains an important source of yield and we think simply having a portfolio that may hold cash, TDs, some hybrids and equities is clearly not A, diversified or B, using the full opportunity set of global fixed income opportunities. And finally, active management is key. If you want to give yourself the best opportunity to pick the winners and avoid the losers, active management is the only way that you can achieve that. Passive locks you in to buying assets or buying Investments in the companies that are the most indebted, in our view, gives up the opportunities that arise when you're being active to add more value to portfolios. Thank you for your time.